So as I'm sure you can see from the title, I am going to be making this intro into video editing. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I have been asked by a couple of people in my life how to sort of get into it or how to get started. And I feel like when I look for tutorials, it doesn't quite necessarily tell you how to like just exactly just go in and do it immediately. So I'm hoping that this does something for somebody out there. And because of the way that this video series is gonna be structured, my uploading schedule may be a little bit different. So if you want to get these videos a little bit faster, you they will be on Patreon first for a few days and then onto the YouTube. So I'm going to be taking this tutorial series from the perspective of someone who has literally just started, which means things that may be obvious, I will explain anyways. And before we even get into the process of opening up our application, I want to get into this one tip, it's organization of any content. And so someone who taught me this was a Mr. Chris Diaz of Observatory Films. I believe it's very important for you to make sure that you have this sort of structure when it comes to your projects. So we're just going to take a look into what these are. So as you can see, we have four separate folders here and I do believe that this is the best way to structure your project. So we have footage, assets, project file and exports. When you are getting into video editing, it's very helpful to just know where everything is. So if like something you're looking for a certain piece of footage, it's just best to know where it is. The more compartmentalized everything is, the easier it is to just find. So let's go through the four. First we have footage, which is your main footage, or it's just anything that you have recorded that is going to be your main thing that you put into your video. So anything you've done through your camera or screen recording applications such as OBS, everything's gonna go in here. Next we have the assets, and your assets are things from like images, meme images, music, really anything that isn't your original footage that you are going to use in the project or may use in the project. Then we have project file. Uh, if it wasn't clear, the project file is just where you'll be keeping the main projects. So this is where you'll be saving your projects when you do have the application open. It's mainly just something that really helps with organization rather than having everything be like loose. And then we have exports, which are your final finished versions of projects, but they could also be things like test drafts when it comes to the final thing. So we're just gonna start off with opening up Premiere Pro. And so when you open up Premiere Pro, you are going to see this kind of layout. Now for me, because I do have my previous projects, that is all gonna show up over here and they will tell you like the last time that you have used them or opened them. So right now we have new project and open project. And as they say, new project is just making a new project and open project is opening up a pre-existing one. There is also this learn tab that has small tutorials to just help you with little things here. I don't know if I'll get into all of these exactly, but I would like to essentially give you guys the basics. So I feel like we would cover some of this at least. But going back to home, what we want to do is we want to click on new project. And so just a note, sometimes uh, Premiere Pro updates can change the layout of things sometimes. Um, so, you know, if you're looking at this more than like five years later and you're like, oh, well, this is not what I'm using. Yeah, I know. So what we want to do first is name our project. And for this project, I'm just going to be calling it learning PP. <laughs> and I have also made a separate folder for this that has the four folders inside there as well. And then it's very important that you also understand this as well before you make and click create, please set your location for your project. In this case, because I put it in my videos folder, we're gonna go into the file and then we're gonna click project file. And this is where our project file is going to be. And as you see on the left, you have your main drives when it comes to like your computer. And you can also organize the way that your files are laid out. So for example, if this is currently the grid format, but if you want to go to more of that of a list, you can do that. And then you have these sliders that can change the size of it. If it would like to do it quickly, that'd be amazing. 
So as you can see, that's just changing. And it's like, this is the smallest setting for the grids. And then this is the largest. And then you have this button, which you can sort them into when they were created or by name. And then you have this other thing where you can, let's say if we went into assets, we wanted to find our audio, we could find only our audio. So, and the same with like videos and images as well. I know you may be thinking, what does the eye do? We will not be using that. And I don't know, uh, I don't think I've ever used it. So for the time being, just ignore it. Whenever I don't talk about something, just assume that we probably won't be using it yet or potentially ever. Now this next step is something that you don't really have to do, but I like to do some of it in the beginning and it is getting our footage and picking it. Uh, but currently I do not have any footage, so I will cut back to when I do. So we are back and if we go into our folder, uh, what we can do now is we can import our media so we can click on our folder to have everything in that folder show up in our project file. But in this case, I, let's say if I just want two, I will just click on these two and I will say these are the two that I want to start off with. Now for videos what you can do is you can hover over these to like get a slight preview of each one just so you can see what you're putting in. And then you'll see these options on the right. Now I'm just going to go over these really quickly. Copy media is best used let's say if you haven't organized your files and you're using something like a hard drive or an SD card. Uh, where nothing has been organized, you can directly make a file that can copy all of that into one of your, either your footage files or your asset folders, either one of those. Because once you take that SD card out or wherever you are getting that main footage out, you can no longer use that to edit with anymore. Then we have this new bin section. Now I would suggest using this because what this does is essentially makes a folder inside your project file. That so uh, let's say if I label this uh, footage, now, when I press create, there will be a file inside that says footage that will have this in it. And I recommend doing this all the time. It just helps unless you already have your file sorted out with your footage already, as we talked about previously. And then you have create new sequence, which I feel like you can do this sometimes, but don't do it all the time. And what it essentially does is it just creates the file. So it will automatically throw your videos onto a timeline as soon as you press create. I wouldn't suggest doing that all the time because you know let's say if you have a large amount of footage uh, that thing is going to be full. So just don't do that unless you have like a smaller amount. For this case we're just going to do it normally and press create. So as you can see we have our project bit up here. As a rule I would really suggest changing this so you can grab this and move it here and then push that out forward. I really suggest doing this because this kind of layout is probably the best when it comes to beginning in video editing. Uh, and that's actually what our next part is about. So you may notice that the structure has changed a little and that's because I have switched it down to its original default layout, uh, which can be done up here in workspaces. Uh, from what I can gather that this generally turns Premiere Pro into like, so depending on which one you pick, it will be more focused on to showing you like that main aspect. So if I click on audio, it'll be more based around like the audio clip mixer and all that. We can see that we have our footage, our two clips that we have selected from before. Now, how do we make our sequence? We have not exactly made anything to work on yet. As you can see, we have a timeline, but it says no sequences. So what we can do is we can, there's three ways of doing this. The way that I would say not to do this is by just taking your clip and throwing it on there. So as you can see now, it has the things like the different visual layers, the audio layers. I'm gonna mute this because every time I move the sequence, it's going to play audio over it. But yeah, I would say do not do it this way because as you can see now, we have our main sequence and you can only see it's our main sequence due to this symbol underneath. And it has the same title as the main video that it's come from. And when you have a lot of videos, this gets very confusing. So personally, I would say don't do that. And you can get rid of sequences by pressing the delete button. 
I would say if you're going to do it, do it these two ways. So get out of any file or any folder that you're in and press like go to file, go new and then go sequence. And that will take you to this menu and it will make a lot of these presets will be based on different cameras, but I just use DSLR 1080 30. I just want to make a small correction on this because I was when I was talking about this I was mainly referring to what I use when I do work with a camera when I work with YouTube videos do use custom and then do set that to 60 frames as well I do talk about this a little bit more but just to say that I meant to say to like if you're starting off just go custom the reason why I say it's best to use custom and then 60 frames is apparently when you are using other, like when you're using these camera settings, it can apparently alter the way that the color is. I have not personally felt this, but I'm going to show you just a comparison between two of the different frame exports. Uh, one of them being the 60 frames and one of them being the 29.97 one and it's pretty if you understand how frames work already you can see that the 60 frames one is just a lot smoother and so these just sort of set the settings for when you are moving to that export timeline and then you have all your settings here as well so it's like depending on that you can say what frames and all that that you've used and then you have your frame size which you know 1920 by 1080 for your widescreen so your youtube videos and all that and then you can flip that around so you can have 1080 by 1920 to have your portrait which is your tiktoks your instagram videos all that stuff and then you want to name this main video and now you are on you have like your completely open timeline now and if you want a quicker way of doing this because essentially the same way you can just press this thing underneath new item and you'll see all these extra things we will talk about some of these later but for now you click on sequence go over the same things press ok change the name in this case we'll do main video 2 and then now we have two sequences. So there I've already shown you how to find, like how to create the thing to work on. So now, if we put our videos to work on. So what you may see now is that when we go to put our clip on it, you'll get saying that it doesn't match the sequence settings. Now what it means by this is because ours is a screen recording and we did it at 60 frames or depending on whatever frames you did, um, you wanna change it. So now if we go to sequence settings where we can see the settings of the sequence, we can see the editing mode has been changed to custom and 60 frames. It's really not a big deal. Another thing you may notice is that in our project window, we have all these other things to look at. And if you press this arrow, you can see everything in there. Personally, like you can move all this around and all that. It's not that important. I find some of these is like things that you'll never use or rarely use. And so what I like to do is go to workspace and workspace effects because then you have your effects, your graphics, your sound and your color settings and some of the others. But I would say go to effects because you have these four and having these four up is quite important like i said before i feel like this sort of structure is the best for beginners and let's say if there's something that you feel like you need you can definitely add that so let's say if you go oh i want my audio track mixer you can click that in and now you have that up here and then you could even move that over here so there's a lot of customization with where you want to move things around and just sort of get used to it and then I want to take you to the tools, our main tools, because let's be honest, in programs like this, you don't always use every single tool. Um, I will go into the more niche ones a little bit later, but the main ones that you have are your selection tool, which allows you to just select things, so your videos, your audio. And I think it's very important to remember that your audio and your video is linked together so you know if you move your video your audio is then going to move with it i will tell you ways that you can change this later on but for now we're just going to go over like basics so selection tool you'll be using like 60 percent of the time then we have our razor tool 
which allows you to just cut up the clips and then using our selection tool afterwards we could just we could separate each bit then and let's say if you accidentally clip something or you and you've just decided that you don't want it anymore if we zoom in and so where this cut is and if you just click in between that you'll see that one of these is like you can see this little red bit now if you press delete it's now become uh, those two have now combined and you can do that with all of it you know bring it back together press delete it's coming back to the first the way it was next we have our rectangle tool it says rectangle but it's like you can change to ellipse and polygon and these like this and the text tool is essentially always creating a new thing on the timeline so and you have to be very specific with these as well so if you say i want to make something on this one i want to make it on this bit and you just make a square or a rectangle if you hold shift like if you want to make a square you can hold down shift and then that will be equal on every side and as you can see let me mute this so before and now because we have that square there that will always appear and then same goes for text as well we say that we want it on the third put that in and if we just say square we now have that available to us and as you can see you always start off with three layers if you wanted to add more all you have to do is just scroll these up and make those layers so now you see we have seven layers it's very important that you realize how video editing works and it works by layers like i said before i am sort of explaining this in a way for anyone who is beginning so as you can see now i have moved our text layer underneath the video but what does this mean so this just means when i scroll over it like we said before it would say square around here but it doesn't say it anymore and that's because the video now has higher priority than the one that but if we put it back up it's right there so it's like a constant stack of things whatever is at the bottom is going to be at the bottom so if you keep putting things on top of it it's going to be a lot harder to see so just always remember that and keep that in mind you can also do things such as so let's say if i didn't want to see the video i can press this little eye icon and it's gone let's say if you have a layer that you don't want to touch but you let's say you want to grab a number of things like let's say that you want to grab all of this let me put that on a separate layer let's say that we want to grab all of this but you don't want to grab layer 3 you can press this lock icon and now can't touch it it's completely fine so as you can see everything has now moved you may notice that it has this icon like this little red thing on it now and that is because we did not lock the audio so the audio has moved where the video has not so just be very mindful of those sort of things and as you can see now it's lined up again that is no longer there then we have our audio bar which essentially just tells us how loud something is um, so let's say if we go over here because it is muted it's not going to show up when you preview it but if I unmute that any time that we scroll past it on this sequence now it's going to sort of have this like scratchy sound I think it's very important to understand how loud is too loud and I mean let me just play this so we can decide how loud is too loud so as we can see we was hitting around here about minus seven minus eight maybe just barely and I would say when you're getting that like that yellow that's when you might be getting a little bit too loud you really don't want to be hitting like this section uh, and what you can do is on any of these videos you can see in this bit up here you can see that we have the effect control panel so what this does is this gives you all different things so you have your motion so you can control 
we're going left, we're going right, and you can also control the scale of the video. So if we want it smaller, rotation. Anchor point essentially just changes where the midpoint is. So if we change that to being on the right side of the video and then choose to rotate it, it's not going to rotate from the middle. And then I don't know what the anti-flicker filter is because I've never used it. Then you have your opacity, so that's pretty explanatory. You have your blend mode, which I wouldn't say that this is very key to get into just yet. This will be something that you will use on some elements of the editing process, but I would say let's save this for like when we're really starting to like experiment with style. And then you have your audio down here. Generally, I do not unlink stuff, but if I do, you'll see now that the audio part from this is now gone. And then you can go have the audio by itself. Uh, and if you wanna know how to unlink, you just hover over the two. So because they're unlinked now, it will give me the option for link. But if I do it again, it will now, I, uh, it will then give me the option to unlink. So like I said before, how loud is too loud? So for things like video games or anything that I've sort of captured, because it's like any audio that you bring in is going to be so loud. So I would say a rough thing to do is to set everything at minus 20. So as you can see here, because we are not in the beginning, of this clip, it has now set only from this point onwards, will it be minus 20. What you wanna do is if that happens is, like if we have no plan on changing or having the sound go up and down, I would completely press this little icon over here, the little, I forgot it was called, the little stopwatch to completely eradicate the use of being able to go up and down. So now it is minus 20 all over. And now if we listen to that again, we can see on our audio bar, we are sitting down here. I would say roughly for music or like background music, you wanna have something that's a little bit, it really depends on the loudness of it, but something where between maybe like minus 25 to minus 45. This really does depend on the loudness though. And I would say a rough speaking voice should be about maybe minus 12, minus eight, somewhere in between that. But as I said before, loudness matters. If it starts off really loud, you may have to go even lower. So as I said before, we have these little stopwatch icons and so essentially what they do is they set up animations so let's i'm gonna mute this for the time being let's say at the beginning i want this to be all the way on the left so where you can barely see any of the rest of it and now if we go forward you'll see that it will always stay on here until we decide or we say what else we want to like, where else we want it to be. Now, if we move it, and let's say, let's move it to, I think it's nine, is it 960? Yeah, so roughly 960, where it's now full screen. You will see that this whole sequence now, it will just be, it's slowly moving, so it matches. And once it reaches that point, it will be exactly the number that we said it would be. But as you can see, this is fairly basic. Like this is all basic stuff for the time being. And we will go into much more. Do not worry about it. So I think I'm just gonna go over a few other notes as well that I think you should know when you are starting off as well. So as you can see, Mine says one quarter uh, over here in the program file. So the program is where, you know, it's the preview of your main project. Uh, and if you, let's say if we click on 
our footage again uh this little source bit will always be the preview of our footage so we have this is the this is the preview of the timeline this is the preview of the footage or any external things that we can put in and what you can see here is essentially when you when it is at full it will the playback will always be showing you your project at the same quality as it was filmed and if you have a really good computer you can probably stay on that but i would suggest for anyone who does not really go down to a quarter and depending on how big the uh not the file but the uh, resolution of the original video is will determine how like far that you can go with that with the project file or our sequence because it is 1920 by 1080 the lowest we can go is a quarter of that so currently we are looking at what it would look like at a quarter of its quality but i think because uh the game is kind of old looking it just looks the same then we have our little zoom in function which I would say fit is generally what you'd be sitting on most of the time and then you know you have your 10% 25 75 you know all this I would say you generally don't use anything more than 200 200 is to like really check to see if things like your graphics are really hitting the edges of the space so as you can see we have our little things here now to really scroll by we can see the edges of our project we can see all that so i would say if you're working with graphics uh, and you really want it to like hit a certain corner this will just help you make sure that you have done that and other than that you can go back to fit to make sure that you have just a clear view of what that all looks like uh, one other thing that I think that you should know when you are getting into this is that Naturally, of course, if you are taking a video and you want to copy and paste it, but this doesn't just goes for videos This goes for like our texts our images anything really uh, You could you know control C control V But always remember that when you paste you always do it from this point So wherever you are on the sequence you do it from that point the best thing to do just because it allows you to move things around because if let's say if I copied this and I paste it it will paste right in the middle the best thing to do is to grab it with your select with your selection tool and then hold down alt and then look you've got two now really saves on some time Another thing to be aware of is if you have a clip and it doesn't match your settings, so as you can see here, we have this video that is clearly it's like low quality and clearly doesn't match our resolution. The best thing to do, and this also goes for images, before you try to alter it, is please click on it and then right click and then set to frame size. Do not scale to frame size. Trust me, just do it this way, it is much better. You don't lose as much quality, but as you can see, this was, this is like 240p or something. So you can only do so much. Then the next thing that I want to pull up as well, and this comes for when we are looking at our footage and we're like, hmm, I like certain bits, but I don't like all of it. So if we go over here and we can see that we have, now this will save your life. This little shortcut will save your life. It will save so much time. But let's say if, so we have all this beginning bit of like me picking a song in this game. Now, if we do not want that, what we can do, so normally, if we were to just put this in the timeline, we would just throw it in, and now that's the whole video. But I didn't want the whole thing of me picking my song and all that. So what we do now is, so you can use the icon, so you can use mark in, and then mark out, which you use I to mark in and O to mark out. And now what this has done is that everything in this whole mark section is the only thing that you will be taking out. So let's say if I do that now, the file is much smaller. We immediately have this beginning. I'm gonna mute that again. And so if we look at it now, we can see we don't have all that. So that is something that is very important. And let's say if we 
said, hey, I only want the audio from this. You can click that button right there for audio and this for video. So if you only wanted the video, pick that out. I've only got the video, I only want the audio. Then we have the audio. So these are the things that are really important. And then you can always do like frame, you can go frame by frame. Generally you won't, but you can if you wanted to. And as you can see in the source bit that the same thing applies to this as well. You can see it in its full quality. Um, sometimes when, so the reason why we play it in a quarter quality is that sometimes when you are playing something back, it will be skipping a lot of frames because your computer can't really keep up, especially if you have a lot of effects playing on top of it or you've decided to edit some effects in. This just makes sure that it's a lot, like the processing is a lot easier for your computer to show back to you. So, so, so far I have really shown you the basics of sort of what everything is. Um, but I haven't really gone into what we can do, have I? So let's say, for example, we can go to our effects panel. Now, I'm not really going to go over any video transition since that is pretty on the nose already. Anything, this is like, these are things that you can play around with. And generally, when it comes to transitions, these are things that you can only put at the beginning or the end of a clip. So if I zoom in, you'll be able to see that. Hey, see that little blue square there? So that applies that transition automatically. And you can alter some of these. So like, for example, if you want the thing to be much longer, you will see now it's a much longer way for it to transition inwards and then you can also like there's different things that you can play around with i would say when it comes to transition that's probably the easiest effects to really start to go into so i would say if you want to play around with transitions that is something you can definitely do and then i would say you have your singular effects that you have here so yeah let's say if we wanted to like stylize the way this looks or something uh, and this also goes back to the effect control segment. So as you can see here, we haven't made any difference to anything, but let's say if we wanted to turn this into a mosaic. So now you have the mosaic effect right here. So let me, if I close motion, if I close the opacity, we now have that and we can decide how many blocks it will be to sort of make that but this will then this will generally change with each effect. So like the mosaic effect won't be the same as the brushstroke effect. And you may notice this as well, what we have just done. And I wanna I want this to sort of be one of the last things I sort of go over. So you will notice that hey, we're, now we're going through you can see all like the, the brushstroke effect. But you may also notice that this right here our clip here even though it's the same clip you will see that you have this yellow bit here and this red bit here and this doesn't mean that something is wrong with your sequence what this means is that you have an effect that is playing or an effect that is on this video or on this section that is causing it like it needs time to process and so what you need to do in order to do let me get rid of this transition. This is not helping. And what you need to do. So if I go to play it now, you will see it's a little choppy. Some effects will be really bad. Like some of them, it will just be so bad that you won't even be able to like see really. And what we can do is we can do this in our sequence as well. So let's say if we wanted to only go over this, I know, remember, we got, we're marking it in and out. And what we do is we render effects in and out. So what this means is that we're just looking at the effects between this bit and we're saying, hey, I want this bit rendered. Now this will, depending on how long it is, that will definitely determine 
the length and estimated time. We don't have a lot of time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. So as you can see, now that we have that render completely finished, now this whole green bit means that it has been rendered completely. So as you can see, we still have this red bit that hasn't been rendered, but roughly you can understand that. And then I wanna go to exporting to sort of finish this up. Um, because I do plan on going over stylizing and how to really make and edit yours uh, later on. So when we go to export, we're going to see this. And so first we want to get our file name. So let's just say uh, main video one. And then we get to choose our location. So now everyone remembers we have our exports. So we set our exports here and we save it here. Um, we want the format to be H.264. Uh, I don't really remember why, but just trust me. And then you have your settings here when it comes to frame size, frame rate, and all that. Sometimes it will set itself at 30 for some of these videos. I always reset them, like well, I untick it and then go to 60. And that will just do that. And honestly, I feel like you could not really worry about a lot of this. Then you have the target bit rate. Sometimes I like to stay at 30. Um, do remember that this will change the size of the project. So if you choose 50, um, it is going to be a larger file than it would be if it was 30. And this does also change the quality sometimes, but the difference between like 30 and 50 is barely noticeable. Whereas if you went 30 to like zero, you may not notice it now, but if you, when you export it, you would. Um, but yeah, and this is also the fastest. So VBR one pass is the fastest that it will go when it comes to exporting. Um, VBR2 pass is much longer, but if you are having issues exporting, it is, these are two things that you can do if you are having issues exporting, like if an error comes up. Um, so you can either change to this, which it will be longer. What Any solution is definitely going to be longer already. Or you can go to this encoding uh, setting and go from hardware encoding to software encoding. Trust me, it was such a pain you, anyone remember my bomb rush video when i was exporting that the hardware encoding was just not working so i just switched to software and so like my free hour export was changed to like nine get into it this is these are just things that you're just gonna have to get used to when you're working with exporting um i do want to go over these a little bit further later on but not yet i've generally just given you the basics of exporting and i think i want to leave it at that so so far i have given you a rough idea of what the basics are looking like and how to really go about it next video I want to show you how to really stylize and really work with some effects as well as some proper uh, ways to really move about the program as well. If anyone out there really appreciate this sort of information and guide or if anyone has any comments that they can add to really help me make it better for you guys, that would be really helpful. For the time being, if you are interested in supporting me, I do have a Patreon that will be in the description below. Um, and yeah, I will see everyone in the next video next week.